me, Greg. You're looking blipular as always. Today I want to talk to you a little bit about how to protect yourself on the battlefield. That's right, today we're talking about armor. Here, my Galax Castle. back. Before we really get into this, I gotta go, hey Callie, hey Chris, <laughs> good to see you, uh, my sweet boys. Anyway, now let's uh, let's get hopping right into it, huh? Let's be blimpular and swingificate this info right to you. Alright, so armor. How does it work in the world of Amp Guard? Well, it's a lot easier than you think, alright? Let's break it down into uh, something you might understand better. Something like uh, points, yeah. Think of it as like points, right? So you've got one point all the way up to six, or I should say zero to six points. Like zero would be nothing and six would be the best you could ever have, right? That's kind of how armor works. Now, a couple things before we get into the scale and what's where and how all those things fit together, gotta remember this. Armor only covers the area that it's on. So, if I've got an exposed elbow and a van brace or something covering my forearm, somebody hits me on that exposed elbow, ah, doesn't matter how much armor I'm wearing down here, they got me on that elbow. Second thing you gotta know is that magic and physical armor, they really don't mix a lot. So, somebody tries to give you some kind of magical armor and you're already wearing physical armor, no go. It's oil and water and those things do not mixify. Okay, they do not go together. Yeah, I just made up another one. Mixify. <laughs> it's pretty good. And bear in mind that the point, the thing with the higher value is typically going to win, or magic is going to win out nine times out of ten. So the magical armor is going to stay, and you're going to be losing yourself with whatever else you got. Okay. Another thing I want to talk to you about real fast is something you're going to encounter in case you're wearing armor, and that's called armor breaking. Now this might seem really confusing, but remember I said there's that scale of 0 to 6? Well, armor breaking works like this. You get hit, and you're wearing 6 points of armor, but it's an armor breaking strike. Well, you go from 6 to 5 on the first hit, 5 to 4 on the second, 4 to 3 on the third, and then the next strike takes all 3 points away, and you are unprotected and bear for, well, the next swing that probably will take you out. That's how armor breaking works. If it's three points or below, it removes the armor entirely, and then the next strike would cause a wound or death, depending upon where they hit you, and if it's above three, it begins to whittle down from there. Armor destroying, that's a different case. They hit you, that armor's gone unless you got some sort of protection or something else, that's going to be in a later video, but not the point. The thing that you need to understand is that armor destroying is a pretty rare thing. You'll run into armor breaking from arrows, barbarians, and from uh, big, heavy, great weapons. I, I personally like that because, you know, I can run around in my plate armor and just you know, swingificate somebody real hard. <laughs> it's pretty good stuff. So now that those kind of basics are out of the way, let's talk about what armor's made of. In the realm of Amp Guard, you're going to run into four different major types of armor. That's going to be synthetic, cloth, leather, and plate, or metal, if you will. That's going to be those kinds of basic ideas. So if we go ahead and take a look at some of the ones that are behind me, I can tell you where their point values are. Remember I said there's those, those points? Every time you hit somebody, you take away a point, unless it's armor breaking or armor destroying, all right? Let me say that again. You hit somebody and they're wearing armor, you took away one point, unless it's armor breaking or armor destroying, okay? So right over here is a great base, right? Nice, good, solid thing you want to wear under almost every type of armor. It's called a gambeson. 
It's cloth padded armor. And it's rated anywhere from one to two points. It's gotta be at least a sixteenth of an inch thick, and it's gotta be held together by stitching or something else, right? Next thing we're gonna talk about is gonna be a synthetic form of armor. Synthetic armor is rated anywhere from one to two points. Now this is stuff that's coming from another land or some strange place. Trust me, I've seen all kinds of synthetic armor in my day. This stuff right here, I hear them call them aluminium. Yeah, aluminium, I believe they're called Sodea tabs. Yeah, these things right here, they're great and they're lightweight, but they really don't hold up the way you want them to, okay? That's a nice little chain shirt a friend of mine lent me. I think it's a pretty good thing. It's lightweight, but like I said, eh, none too good. Those are rated anywhere from one to two points, okay? But, unlike a gambeson, which can kind of go on ahead and uh, facilitate and help your other armor do better, uh, the chain here, uh, that little synthetic stuff can't get above two points maximum because, you know, it's weird stuff. We don't really know where it's coming from and doesn't really do much good to protect you. Next thing is going to be leather armor. Now, this comes in two flavors. This comes in light armor, or light leather, and heavy leather, right? Let's go ahead and say that ten times faster. <laughs> that'll that'll t twistificate your tongue real quick. <laughs> anyway, man, you guys are great to talk to. You're blimpular. I'm making up all these great words. Anyway, so uh, this right here is light leather armor. This is anywhere from one to two points, okay? It's about maybe, oh, I'd say this stuff's probably about, oh, an eighth of an inch thick, right? Not too terribly thick. It's got a bit of a padded gambus in here, so that's definitely going to take it up to two. But this stuff right here, just one to two points, maybe three if you get it up with a good padded gambus underneath of it. Now, strong leather, leather, or heavy leather, yeah, that's twisted me up something fierce in my time. That's going to be up to a quarter of an inch. Probably can't really see that where you're at, but this stuff's nice and thick and heavy. This is going to be anywhere from two to three points of armor. So this is kind of a nice little thing. You're almost a quarter of an inch thick and going on ahead and saying up to two to three inches. Now, that can also depend upon whom you're talking to as well, right? Next is going to be chainmail. Chainmail is absolutely wonderful. And I got this rusty thing right here from a friend of mine again. Now, me, I'm going to tell him afterwards he needs to start taking care of his chainmail. Because <laughs> I'm telling you what, if that was in my armory, oh man, it wouldn't look like that at all. It'd be, it'd be shining and beautiful. But anyway, not the point. Chainmail's anywhere from uh, two to three to possibly four points, okay? Chainmail, if it's got a gambeson under it and it's in good shape and good repair, you're definitely going to get that fourth point. But otherwise, it's typically going to generally be about three points. A little couple notes about chainmail. Chainmail's got to be 16 gauge if it's round wire, 18 gauge if it's flat wire, and the inside diameter can't be bigger than three eighths of an inch. Oh, and you got to choose your weaves carefully because typically we're running four and one European style. I know that may not make any sense to you guys. But trust me, if you're shopping around for armor, and you're looking at chainmail, you're going to learn about those weaves pretty quick. There's hundreds of them. They're all over the place. Next couple things i got to talk to you about. I don't have any to show you, but I can go on ahead and talk to you about the principles behind them. Let me show you. Got my little plates right here to help you. Next ones are going to be butted plate, right? These are small plates that have gone on ahead, and they're right up against one another, but they don't got any overlap. That's anywhere, once again, from about two to four points, depending upon the quality of the make and kind of what you got going on. These guys don't, butt up, don't go on ahead and go across one another, but they do butt up against one another and they're held up by uh, leather, or they're going to go on ahead and have a chain kind of keeping them together. That's the basic principle behind them. These have to be at least 18-inch steel, okay? Next one's going to be scale. Scale overlaps and has a bit of a bending quality to it. I don't know if you guys can really see that, but you kind of get this bending quality to it. There's a little bit of overlap, okay? Kind of like scale mail, if you've ever seen that. Scale mail's really good, because you're going ahead and you can bend it back and forth. And uh, it goes up anywhere from, uh, again, two to four points, depending upon the quality of the make and if you got a gambeson underneath of it. So those are really, really wonderful things. you got scale mail. And then you've got the next one, which is lamellar armor. Let me show you this real quick. At the last minute, I was able to get one of my buddies to share his. 
<clears throat> he had a little accident, and uh, he uh, kind of said I could have it because he's kind of given up his warrior ways. I guess that's what all the, the red is from. Sorry if you're a bit squeamish, but uh, I couldn't get it off. But anyway, you can see here, it's a bunch of tiny little plates that are overlapping one another and are kind of rigid. They're not moving. If I shake that, it shakes the whole thing. It's lamellar armor. This is anywhere from three to four points standard. You put a gambeson underneath of this, you got five, and if it's a good quality make, hey, hey, you're at six points right there. Really nice, solid stuff. Kind of uh, fun to get into. Uh, slow on the mobility here, too, because these plates don't want to move at all. But Lamlar armor, it's pretty good. Next one we're going to talk about is going to be Brigandine. Brigandine right here is great stuff. Brigandine is any sort of metal that is going to have, have a little bit of overlap to it, but also is held together by leather or some sort of cloth. That's going to be anywhere from four to five points standard. And if it's got a good quality make to it, yeah, you can pop it up to six, maybe. It just depends. And finally, last but not least, my personal favorite, plate armor. Plate armor is wonderful. It's great stuff. It articulates and has, you know, sort of, some sort of, you know, overlapping quality to it, but it is solid metal. This is five to six points. Where a gambeson underneath of it, definitely six points. Now you can't go above six. That's kind of the thing. Because it can get really hard if you were out there and, you know, 20 points of armor and everybody was just wailing on you. You'd be really, really tough. And the material's not going to hold up. Let's be real. <laughs> anyway. Point being, this is six points right here, and it's absolutely wonderful to have, okay? Plate armor. Now, with all the metal, like the plates, the, the butted plates, the scale mail, the plate armor, the brigandine, and even the lamellar, you gotta go on ahead and have that be 18 inch, or 18 gauge steel. Sorry, it's not 18 inch, it could be bigger than 18 inches. Good, but it's 18 gauge steel, and that's kind of the standard thing that we talk about. If it's something like the aluminium, or you know, I know there's some people who got like mithril and other things like that. Sorry, guys. <laughs> I mean, steel is what we're measuring everything by, so just bear that in mind. So that's kind of a basic overview of uh, armor, rating it, and how you can, you know, kind of see it on the battlefield and how it works. Uh, I hope that's helpful to you and kind of giving you a broad overview. So, uh, hey, you, stay blimpular.